All right, guys, Mike Simon here, a.k.a. Dirt Perfect, back on the Heavy Metal Learning Channel with Officer Hoover today, and we're going to cover when a CDL is required. Yes, this is one of the biggest questions that we get. Like, like he said, my name's uh, Brent Hoover with the Indiana State Police, uh, Master Trooper. Uh, commercial Vehicle Enforcement Division. So, what, like I said, what uh, CDLs? I mean, that is one of the biggest questions. First off, what is a CDL? CDL is a commercial driver's license. Are they all so, traded the same? No. We're going to learn that once, like I said, when we did the load securement, once you get something figured out, they go and change it. So, <laughs> so we're going to have you go in all sorts of different directions. Now, I've never claimed to be an artist, so please take it easy on me there, but I think you can get the idea of cab over, semi-tractor, straight truck, trailer, pickup truck, you know, so we'll go from there. So, uh, big thing is, and, and like I said, if, if going through this, if anybody out there would like, I've got this wonderful little cheat sheet flow chart, uh, we'll kind of, it even comes in color, but, but like I said, if you want a, your own version of this, feel free to shoot a message or email me. Um, Indiana State Police Commercial Vehicle Enforcement Facebook page get a hold of me and I'd be happy to send this to you because like I said it's and this is something when I'm training new guys keep your flow chart handy it, it really helps and, and we'll try to get that Facebook page linked in the description for everybody so if you Absolutely. guys are interested a lot of great information there all right so um, and with we'll just kind of break this down and we'll go through it so we got CDL commercial driver's license so commercial driver's license is required for a commercial motor vehicle but what size commercial motor vehicle, what type will you need for what you're doing? What configuration? Exactly. So, when we first start out, first question that is on our flow chart here, and we're going to kind of reference that, are you operating a commercial motor vehicle with a gross combination weight rating? So we're talking gross combination weight rating. So that is basically the GVWR plus the GBWR. So that's the tow unit, and in this case, the trailer. So when you see gross combined weight rating, that's the two GBWRs added up for the power unit and the trailer. So they're saying, are you operating a commercial motor vehicle with a gross combination weight rating of 26,001 or more? So that's our first question. So a commercial vehicle, that basically means somebody is paying you to perform a service with that vehicle, correct? Absolutely. So this is if you are, if, if, if your ex guy calls and says, I need a backhoe move from here and there, and you say, I'll do that for $400. And these ratings add up over 26 one. Yes. I'll get ahead of you a little bit. Yeah, we're getting a little bit ahead. So I'm going to stop you there. That's fair. First, let's define a commercial motor vehicle. That's, so that's we'll, we'll, let's that's go right. there first. So uh, the definition of a commercial motor vehicle is any vehicle with a GVWR of 10,001 pounds and up. So this is really your pickup truck. Gee whiz, my arrows are falling apart today. <laughs> but so basically if we've got a big dually pickup truck and it's greater than 10,001 pounds, and I say, hey, I, I just bought a refrigerator from the store. I don't have a pickup truck to haul it. I know my buddy's got a big dually pickup that's greater than 10,000. I'm gonna pay him 100 bucks to move it. That vehicle's now considered a commercial motor vehicle. So when we get into commercial motor vehicle, that's when the federal regs fall upon us, and we've gotta go from there. So. Um, kind of going back to what you're saying, are you operating a, a CMV, which is greater than 10,001 pounds, that has a gross common weight, weight rating of 26,000 pounds or more? So that that's the big thing. And we're talking 26,000 or more. That gets real important. So if we're operating something that's got a gross combination weight rating, which is both GVWRs added up greater than 26,000, we're gonna need a Class A CDL. 
in a dually truck with a hot shot trailer, which is your yep. example over here. So we got a dually truck, and we'll just say a goose. 20,000 pound. You know, exactly. So we got 20K, and let's just say this is a good old 10,000. So 10K, 10K, 20K, 30K, our CBL is going to need to be an A. Now we can dive in even further. So, um, and we'll we'll advance on the flow chart in just a minute. But since we're talking Class A CDLs, now when you go to test, depending on how your home state runs it, but typically all states are the same. You got a semi tractor, and you got a truck with a trailer. There's even further two different types of CDLs. So there's CDLs that if you take a test in a semi-tractor, you can only operate semi-tractors and you can operate this. But if you test in a pickup truck, which is a TK designation, and the tractor's a TT designation, you're gonna get two different CDLs. So this is the big daddy of them all. So if you've got a class A CDL, you drove a manual transmission truck, you can drive anything on this list. Well, so just to recap real quick, mm -hmm. if you get a, a TK, which would be the pickup truck and trailer, you can't go up. You can't go you up the, unless you, get, you test. Right, so mm -hmm. but if you get the TT, you can drive everything yes. from there. Yes, back. so basically if you test, and the TT, TK, that's just the designation of the truck. That's not necessarily on your license, but it's going to tell you what you can drive. So. Just real quick, like Absolutely. when we stop roadside, we see a CDL Class A. It may only say truck trailer Class A CDL. It's going to have that restriction, telling us the officers that hey, this person only drove this for the testing. They cannot be in this. And this nowadays, they've added a manual or an automatic endorsement, which means if you test in a automatic transmission, you can only drive an automatic truck. So if I stop your roadside, you've switched jobs, and you've got an automatic endorsement on your CDL, and you're driving a manual, you're going to have to be placed out of service until you get that. So that's real important. That's something new in the last few years. As more automatic trucks have made the market, we're starting to see that pop up and get people in And you've kind of hit on this a little bit. I just want to make sure we're clear about this, that there is restrictions to go to air brakes would be another restriction on a TT. Absolutely. And then also you have other endorsements. I'm thinking of doubles, triples, hazmats. Exactly. And stuff like that. So th this mm -hmm. is the baseline. Yes, okay. this is this is your, basically, if you want to be able to drive anything and out there, go and get your Class A CDL, and then you got to add your additional endorsements, endorsements. for doubles and triple trailers, your hazmat, tanker, all of that. And we could talk a whole other segment. Not maybe just a whole other, another whole other endorsement. So, but, but, but again, just to recap, that'll go from there down, but you can't go from, from yeah, there up. Yeah, you can't go right. from here up, you can go only down. So, we've, we've discussed GCWR greater than 26,000, you gotta have a Class A CDL. So, oh, everybody thinks, oh, the semis, semi tractor's gotta have them. Nope. Don't forget the bigger pickup trucks, these bigger trailers, they're going to need their own Class A CDL. And the next part of the flow chart here is the gross vehicle weight rating of the trailer towed unit 10,000 pounds or more. And that kind of comes into play when we get down here. So, in this case, we're going to say no. So what, what we've got stopped is... Um, Basically, we've got something that the GCWR is greater than 26,001, but the GVWR is less than 10,000. So now we're in class B CDL. So basically, I think an example of this would be like a dump truck full of an air compressor. Exactly. Is that, is that really exactly. a good example? So we're going to say this dump truck has a 33,000 GBWR, and let's just say the trailer here has a 9,000. 
Okay, so you can real quickly see 33,009, that's greater than 26,000, but our trailer, our towed unit is below the 10,000 mark. So we would only need a class B CDL to do this. Or no trailer and just a truck. So if I stop a dump truck with 33 GVWR or anything greater than 26,001, a straight truck on its own, you're going to need that BCDL. And then if your trailer gets above 10, then we're back up into Class A. So you, um, I use the, the dump truck air compressor. What's a couple mm -hmm. other examples of this scenario you've possibly seen? All right. So here in the state of Indiana, we love we love our triaxle dump trucks. So we love our triaxle dump trucks. So we see a bunch of those, and we even see our quad axle dump trucks. So those are some examples, and then. Especially in the construction industry, you've got the big tank pump trucks. Any, basically, anything greater than 26,001 is going to be our B CDL or even like a bus, but that's passenger endorsement. That's, again, that's a, no, that's a whole other animal that we can, we can talk about at a later time. And just to recap on this, is you can have, uh, the, I mean, this truck can be up to 76,000 pounds. Oh, absolutely. Plus. And absolutely. you can have a Class B as long as the towed vehicle is under 10,000. Under 10,000. And that's not the load you're carrying, that's the rating on the trailer. Yes. So I think that gets lost in translation sometimes. And if you have a 16,000 pound trailer, that don't mean you can haul 16,000 pounds because you have to take the weight of the trailer into consideration. Exactly. And that's that's a whole other clamshell, too. And and on this, and, and you stumbled upon something, I'm glad you did, because the actual weight comes into effect as well. Right. So there's, there's multiple ways we can look at this. So if this truck is driving empty down the road, and the GVWRs are this, he's going to need a Class A. Now, let's say this guy here, he's got his 33,000. Say the GVWR is 9, but say they've overloaded that. Let's say we pull them into the scales, and this trailer's now weighing 12,000. So he, he bumped himself into a he class He bumped a. himself into a, CD, a class A CDL. So you've got to be real careful. The weight of the vehicle comes into play as well. Gotcha. So, so the quick look is just what your basic GVWRs, and then I always warn people, if you're G, basically, at this point in time, if you stick with the GVWR, that's a good indication, but where the guys will additionally get in trouble is where, or up here, is they got this trailer that's 10, and then they make it this one 15 to where they're 25, but then they put too much weight on that trailer. So th this may be, this is a real uh, rookie question, but, I, but I've asked this question to you before in, in the past, is GBWR, where do you find these numbers at? So where we find these numbers at, anybody can find these numbers, is there's the VIN tag on all vehicles. It's required on all vehicles here in the state of Indiana. It's a, it's a class D felony if you deface or remove those VIN tags, so it's real important. But typically, um, any motor vehicle in the driver's door, you can locate, locate that VIN tag that's going to have your GVWR. And then on trailers, typically front left up here on the tongue area, you're going to locate the GBWR on the VIN tag, right. and that's exactly where law enforcement And, and for some reason, if you can't find it, normally it's on a trailer, you can always contact the manufacturer, manufacturer and, they, and they will and provide that. that. Absolutely. Uh, now, Absolutely. one thing we need to touch on with GB, GBWR is if somebody goes to the registration of their truck and gets it off there, that could be misleading. That could be misleading as well, because some states here in the state of Indiana, they, your GVWR may be, you know, whatever, and they, they can allow you to plate it less or plate it more. Gotcha. So um, here in the state of Indiana, we rely a little less on the registered weight just because we know that by a mistake, um, and even I've seen it, I bought a personal pickup truck here recently, and the GVWR on it is 9,000, but the only thing the BMV would sell me was an 11, thousand pound plate. Well, us as law enforcement, we understand that BMVs can be particular like that, so that's why we always really look at the actual weight or the GV. Uh, my, my point of that the conversation is, is be a little bit cautious about the registered weight because it's yes. not the numbers you're going to go off of exactly. of, of road size. So. Exactly. And the registered weight that will come into play more like this example, um, 
say uh, he was weighing 12 and he's got 14,000 pound plates on this, then he's not technically going to be over his registered weight. But got to warn you there, don't use that as a chance to try to add more weight because a lot of times these tires, and we've talked about this in the past, yep. tires are rated for and, and weight limits large. on axles and tires and bridge laws and all that stuff. That's another possible avenue we can go down yeah. with a lot of good information managers yeah, and that changes greatly from state to state it does unlike some of this it stuff. does now with the class b cdls you also have a lot of the same uh endorsements as well as far as automatics and, and uh hydraulic versus air brakes um and you probably know more about it than than i do but basically this is for a single unit vehicle yes or Big, a single unit vehicle and towing anything less than 10,000. Yeah, I, I messed that up, brain fart. <laughs> I haven't had my... Uh, it, it's actually early on a Sunday morning. It, yeah, so we're, 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 we're doing good, we're doing good. But I haven't had my diet due today, but so, yeah. So uh, class B, you're absolutely right, Mike, is that we're looking at the single unit vehicle that's greater than that 26,001 that happens to tow something less than 10,000 So I want to hit on something here a little bit that a lot of people try to get the loophole or whatever, and you see this right here on trucks. Not for hire. Yes, this this not for hire, Class C, we'll, we'll discuss this just real quick. Um, what it is, everybody, pretty well every state has their own different connotation on what this is. Basically, I, and I'm sure when you first got your CDLs, this was a chauffeur's, some people called it a Class C. Well, here in the state of Indiana, excuse me, what we call this now is a for hire endorsement. So what this is covering is that 16,000 and one to the 26,000 GVWR mark. So, so this is basically covering those CMVs that are 16,000, gee whiz, I'm really not got my due. At this point. <laughs> so 16,000, and one plus to the 26,000 mark, okay? So this, this for hire endorsement, this covers those those smaller box trucks, those delivery vans, That's what the, I was ready to say the, the bigger plumber, you know, and this is the, this is what state of Indiana, this is what we're required for those smaller. So I want to hit on one other thing that I think is really important to bring out here is, is I'm not for hire, I'm just, Joe Blow Mike. I've got me a Dilly truck. I got me a 20,000 pound gooseneck trailer. I bought me a tractor in Iowa. And it's my personal tractor. I'm not paying nobody to go get it. I, you know, I'm going to pick up my uh, equipment, my possession. Now, from my understanding, I'm perfectly legal to do that with no, with a Class A or a, with a, just an operator's driver's license. Yes. A standard driver's license. Yes. Is that under, under the laws here in the state of Indiana, if it's your personal property, your personal pickup truck, your personal trailer, and you're retrieving your personal property, as long as you've got a valid driver's license, they're good current go. insurance, current plates, you are good to and go. And that but, applies up to what weight rating? Um, that applies as high as you want to go. Okay. So, so a perfect example I use all the time is tomorrow I win the lottery and I go down to the Kenworth dealership and I, I like that brand new W900. And then I go next door to the Great Dane and I see a 53 foot drive in. I could technically legally drive that up and down the road with an operator's license if it's all my own personal property. Now, at the moment, even if I take that truck and my aunt Susie pays me a dollar to go pick up an apple pie and bring home from the store, all bets off. All bet. You're falling into the race, and I think that that applies more with the the heavier duty pickup trucks and some goose next stuff. And I, and and yes, and I do want to warn anybody that's watching out west. Some states under their state laws may require a CDL. So when in doubt, check with your home state. But as far as here in the state of Indiana, personal stuff like that, you're just And uh, uh, in contrary to the first vehicle, we, uh, the first video we did on load securement, we talked all the federal regulations on that. This here is a little bit more dictated by the states. I know they got baseline feds, but the states kind of play yes. this a little Yes, and, and what, we, what we really hit on was the all the federal stuff. The, federally, they say this is what's going to be required for the CDLs. And again, we said 
feds, they can give us the minimum, states can add additional. So that's where some states go, you know what, we like after the bigger stuff, we're going to require it. And they may have certain endorsements in state CDL gotcha. only, something goofy like that. But you need to do some of that. And we do some of that. So like the for hire, this is something that we require a for hire endorsement on this. But um, something that I want to throw out there is if you're from Indiana, you got a class A CDL and and you've renewed it in the last couple of years, make sure and check. You may have, it may say non for hire CMV or something with the verbiage on the back. Don't get confused. If you've got a class A CDL, that trumps all that. What okay. we've had is other states will see that and other uh, states will want to put our drivers out of service thinking their CDL is no good. Um, just kindly tell them, no, it, it's a mistake. We've got a lower endorsement. What that means is I don't have a lower endorsement, but since I got a class A, it, it, it trumps, trumps it. it trumps that. So. Uh, one other question, I know you get a lot and I get questions for it as well, and, and the other realm of drivers is farmers. Oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so, um, so I don't know, I, mm -hmm. I know that varies greatly from state to state, but I guess just quickly hit on what your, what your take is on the farmers and so CDLs. So basically what it is, um, say Mike Simon, you have a farm and you hire me to work at your farm, I'm actively getting a paycheck. If I am your paid farm hand or you, if it's your truck, your trailer, and your product, that's the big that's kicker the right there. Your product, corn, wheat, grain, whatever, you do not need a CDL to operate the bigger farm equipment. Now, if I'm on that farm and that farmer asks me to move a piece of construction equipment he has, what happens there? That kind of pushes, pushes the boundary a little bit, but still being that it's a farm tractor, farm related, that kind of goes back to being your equipment. Your equipment. So, but what gets a lot of those farmers in trouble is farmer B's got the nice drop deck trailer, farmer D does not, but he's willing to swap something or do, do, do a favor, trade. that's still getting in. Those and, and I think one a good example we've talked about in the past is farmer A, if farmer B hires, hires farmer A to move his grain, they're not farming no more. He's in the trucking business. He is now in the trucking <laughs> so business. That, I know that happens a lot, and, 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 but that's something that, that, that throws you back into the class. They see it it throws from. it all into the mix. So, well, I think we covered a lot of different things here. We also covered a lot of different avenues we could possibly go down. Um, if anybody has any further questions about this, we'll link the Facebook yes. page. Yes. And uh, I want to point out that if they message that Facebook page, it goes straight to you. It comes straight to me. So it, it's it not going through any other offices or getting yeah. filtered out or anything yeah. like that. Um, again, I've known Officer Hoover for a long time. He's been a huge asset to me. Hope you guys find him the same way to being a huge asset. Can't thank you enough for taking the time. <laughs> I can't. Uh, no. You cannot thank you enough. Yeah. yeah, we, we, we have it. It's... Uh, yeah, we, we've become good friends over the exactly. years. Exactly. And uh, exactly. greatly appreciate that. So if you guys have any questions, uh, get a hold of him. Uh, well, I want to greatly thank him for his time uh, this morning. And as always, guys, thanks for watching, and we'll catch you on the next one. Thank you. Be safe.